Greetings, folks. This is Annette of AnnetteLeonard.com coming back with another moment for chronic wellness. Thank you for being here. So as we think about the human rights model of disability versus the medical model of disability, and I say versus because it really is not a system where there is any overlap. <laughs> it really is a um, either or, not a both and. Um, and it ties into the questions of person-centered language versus disability-centered language. And, and then we layer on top of that the idea of universal design. So universal design was developed, I did not look this up before I'm speaking about it. I seem to think that it was sort of conceived of in the 60s and 70s in an architecture framework and has since been expanded out to encompass way more than architecture. But the idea was that if systems, structures, and attitudes were changed, that was the blown out idea, I mean initially it was just structures, that so many impediments to people's abilities would be changed. So case in point, many of us can think about like a round doorknob that you would have to grasp with your whole hand versus the doorknobs that are sort of like horizontal slashes that you can just push with your elbow or the palm of your hand or the back of your hand or, or an implement that you're carrying, but you don't have to grasp. And that those, those push down handles are far more universal access or universal design than the round ball kind of turning handles because they require so much less from the user and therefore are more usable by more people. Um, even more so just the push a button ones that so often have, you know, sort of a wheelchair graphic on them uh, that then allow the doors to open at just the push of a button. Because think about this, any one of us has benefited from pushing those buttons or using the slash handles when we're pushing a baby stroller, we're carrying heavy objects, we've got an umbrella in one hand and a coffee in the other. We're holding somebody else's hand with one hand and all of our other stuff in the other. I mean, any one of us can come up with any number of ideas why these doors are helpful. Germs are the enemy and I'm gonna push that button with my elbow. I mean, there's, a, there's so many reasons why that is universally more accessible than the grasp and turn style doorknob. And that is just one example. Curb cuts are another example that when we put curb cuts, it's not just people who use wheelchairs who benefit, it's people on scooters, it's people pushing strollers, it's people who use walkers that have wheels on them, it's um, somebody using roller skates. I mean, it's on and on and on. The, the benefits only start to compound. So we say we're doing this for someone who needs curb cuts for wheelchair access and we find that so many people on down the line benefit and so access becomes much greater much more universal when we design this way so i've just given you two examples that are structural but then we find that if our systems were changed. So if we didn't have systems that were biased against women, if we didn't have systems that were biased against people whose names looked like ours, if we didn't have systems that were biased toward the, the norms in our country, <laughs> the, that things would be more open and a more level playing field for everyone. And the, the same things with beliefs and attitudes, that if we dismantled these, we would have more accessible systems universally. All right, so that's just like a really crammed together nutshell about universal design. We're gonna pick this up and talk about how person first and human rights model and, human, and universal design all sort of coalesce tomorrow. Hang in, look forward to continuing this topic. And as ever, if you have thoughts 
questions, disagreements, points of contention, things you want to contribute to the conversation, I absolutely want to hear from you. So leave your comments, please rate this, and I absolutely need more subscribers. So wherever you are listening or watching this, I hope that you would please subscribe. In the meantime, I'm grateful you're here. And until we can be together again, be well.